Hey there! Welcome back. Once again, it is time for the Golden Age of DC Comics. 365 days where I take this beloved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. This has been surfing my coffee table ever since and is a source of comic book shop style conversations. The kind that I am looking to recreate here today right now with you! Exactly! I love comic books, and if you love comic books too, you are in the right place at the right time. Try smashing that subscribe button if you like me, and you want to uh, talk with me every day about comic books, because we're going to do that. What goes well with a coffee table book and a coffee table conversation? Pull up a chair and bring a cup of your favorite. We're going to talk about comic books. This is our coffee table. Slancha. Skull. Cheers. Salud to your health. Hope you're feeling well today, and I hope you're clobbering your problems and not being clobbered by them. The golden age of DC Comics runs between 1938 and 1955. The Silver Age from 1956 until 1970. The Bronze Age between 1970 and 1985. And the Copper Age begins in 1985. I get these definitions uh, from the glossary of the most current edition of the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide. I feel this is a really fair standard. Perhaps we can agree on this standard. And from there, talk more about the ages of comics. Like, what age are we in? What age did we just leave? What age are we going to? I can't really accept this nebulous, huge, modern era of comics stemming from 1992, 1993 until today. That's 30 years. That's way too long. Um, we can break that up a little bit more. And um, I have an idea. What's yours? Share it. Put it in the comment section. Let's talk more about comic books. I use this book for its intended purpose. It's a 365 days book. We're going to open up to today's date, which is September the 9th. We're going to look at some comic book art from an antediluvian age. We're going to read the blurb, and then we're going to talk about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So here we go. Let's crack this book open. I usually also do something called the Escapism Caveat. I have put that now in its own video at the end of the show. You can find it right here. And uh, so tune in, uh, comment on that, uh, like or dislike if you agree or disagree. It's about the needs of activism and advocacy and message spreading in our fictions versus our need of escapism and to leave behind the world's problems just for a few moments in a day. Whether it's comic books or tabletop gaming or sports or, or church, um, what cost really is the intersection of real life problems in the spaces where we're trying to leave them behind. And qui bono? Who profits? Who benefits from that? Uh, let me know. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get to it. It is September the 9th. <laughs> and uh, we're teaming up with and teaming with heroes. That's a, that's a pun. Teaming. Oh, the puns. It's September 9th, and it's from the cover of Leading Comics, number four from fall of 1942. We have the Seven Soldiers of Victory, the second superhero team in, in what became known as DC Comics. I've fallen down rabbit holes, especially about the three different companies, and even a fourth if you consider the distribution company that all made up national publications that led to it formerly being known as DC Comics by 1977. I'm just like, I'm learning so much about my beloved stories. And not only are they just superhero stories, it's about pub the publication industry as well. And this is back in the 20th century when this was our internet <laughs> really, yeah. This is how we got information and entertainment. Seriously. So let's read the blurb. Leading Comics advertised five favorite features because some of its seven soldiers of victory had already been teamed 
and their appearances elsewhere. The Star Spangled Kid and Stripesy, Green Arrow and Speedy. This sort of confusion may account for the fact that this particular supergroup never experienced the popularity enjoyed by the more star-studded Justice Society of America. The rest of the seven soldiers included Vigilante, the Crimson Adventure, uh, the Crimson Avenger, and not shown in this cover detail, the Shining Knight, and also the eighth seventh soldier was also Wing, who was Crimson Avenger's kid sidekick. Never forget Wing, all right? And yeah, so these are the seven soldiers of victory. Uh, we've talked about them a few times, but what I didn't know, or what I keep learning, I, I kind of knew about the whole thing of there was national publications, national comic publications, and then uh, there was Detective Comics Incorporated, which was made to um, uh, distribute Detective Comics. And that's where we get DC from. There was also All American Publications as well, which was a legitimate sister a group to the national publications, okay? And now All American Publications is where uh, the superheroes came from. So, national, as it's being its own publishing identity, created leading comics. And leading comics was where their superhero stories would be featured. And that's when they came up with uh, the Seven Soldiers of Victory, who were the the big players in this magazine. And it started in winter of 1941-42, and, and the, the title itself ran until 1955. But this is, this is uh, Leading Comics is a great example of the changing needs of the marketplace, uh, the changing uh, storytellings, uh, the popularity of certain intellectual properties. Um, when the superhero genre faded in popularity, and you know what I'm reading from? The Wiki! <laughs> That's my Rich Evans voice. Uh, I love, I love, love Red Letter Media. Um, when the superhero genre faded in, the po faded in popularity in the late 1940s, DC Comics decided to focus more on other genres, such as science fiction, western humor, and romance. Leading Comics led the charge as the first DC title to drop its superheroes. With its summer 1945 issue number 15, Leading switched to talking animals. Anthropomorphic animals that were, it was about comedy and cuteness and following with, uh, with, with the Looney Tunes and the Disney, right? Um, with the introduction of Nero Fox, a fox who was billed as the jive-jumping emperor of ancient Rome. In issue 23 of February-March 1947, Nero Fox was dropped as the cover feature um, and, uh, in the, and the first story each issue to be replaced by Peter Porkchops. And uh, Peter appeared in leading comics and uh, was retitled leading screen comics when issue number 34 in 1948 and ran regularly until issue 77 um, in August, September of 1955, which is the end of the golden age of, of comic books. The, the, silver, the silver Age will begin the next year in October of 1956. Uh, specifically, the starting gun um, is showcase number four with Gardner Fox and Carmen Infantino's new Flash, Barry Allen, the Silver Age Flash with that iconic outfit. And um, so, yeah, the death of Leading Comics. Leading Comics ran the entire span of the golden age of DC Comics, huh? And it's a great example. So let's look at that art once again. We've got Speedy, Green Arrow, we've got the Crimson Avenger, we got Vigilante, we got Stripesy and the and the Star Spangled Kid, and there's some nemesis inside of a bottle. It looks like that from here, from this is perspective, and this is you know art, and this is interpretation. Like, is that supposed to be a a shine of light from the bottle? Um, 
are, are you know, what's what's going on exactly? And um, yeah, we've been talking about comic books, and we're gonna talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Like and subscribe. I would love to earn your subscription. We make daily content here. We talk about comic books every day, and we're going to talk about... We have done so every day since the beginning of the year. You can look in the, the playlist. Uh, uh, we have... Uh, there's a playlist for this show. All, all the episodes are archived. Uh, we've been we're doing this all year long. Check us out. See how far the show has come, huh? And um, we also talk about spirituality, gratitude, and purpose. We talk about cooking. I'm a professional chef. I have the What's Cooking playlist. Check that out. And uh, we will see you again tomorrow, okay? Cheers, good luck, namaste, and tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m., okay? Cheers. Bye-bye.